on March 16, 2016. This is Social Lesson number 19, Day 3, Part 1. Greeting Bridge friends, Michael here at Bridge Hands, and welcoming to our third part, continuing episode on the Advancing Bridge Player. And as you'll recall, when we were in Day 1, we spoke about hand devaluation. That is, we took a look at 4, 3, 2, 1, high card points, ace, king, queen, jack. Jacks, maybe not so much one-ish. Three quarters, maybe. If they're working suits, those we talked about working honors, we have others, hopefully in our hand, if not maybe with our partner, then yes, that jack looks a lot better, doesn't it? As opposed to disaggregated in different suits. Then we took a look at extra distribution points for something more than a four card suit with those working honors, or as partner, the dummy, the responder, having a suit fit with us, hopefully in a major suit, and where they have some shortage in a side suit that the opener can use for roughing power with sufficient trumps in the dummy. Then we took a look at losing trick count. As you recall, losing trick count is where we have a fit with our partner or a semi self sustained suit with a suit quality of nine or more, that is honors plus the length of the suit, four honors, five long, that would be nine, six long, three good honors, that would be nine, wouldn't it? So either a fit or we have a very good suit, then we can take a look and start counting our losers. And if we have a seven loser hand, we're average. A six loser hand, bully on you. We should be doing a help suit game try or inviting game, even though our partner signed off one heart, two hearts. Or then there's scenarios where we're looking to go for slam. Now our partner as responder, we assume we would instead be easier to count cover cards rather than losing trick counts. So if our partner has one heart, two hearts, it sounds like they got two cover cards, an ace and a king, perhaps, and so on and so forth. You can go back to lesson number one for more on that if you want to come back up to speed. In lesson number two, then, what we talked about was about having focus, awareness, situational awareness around the table, as well as self-awareness, taking a look at herself, and a lot of it goes in with emotions, but we have to be aware is that just like we're talking right now, a lot of it's the right brain coming up with a gut level feel and what's going to be said next. What's going to happen next at the table are all things to consider. That was part two. Next then, the inferences from the leads. Yes, that's where we're at today. And we're going to be leading 25% of the time, right? A lot. Shouldn't be where we're leading too much more or else we're not bidding enough. Or it shouldn't be too much less or else the opponents are seeing the contracts from us, unless you're going to double them for going too high most of the time, right? So in the beginning, we start off with the hand evaluation, don't we? Sure. And then we do the bidding phase. And then after that, we do that look and listen. That was talked about in last week's episode. The focus, the awareness, being aware of the situations that are going around the table. And then after that, we have where we start taking a look at things such as counting counting the points, counting the distribution of the suit. Recall the very common distribution is a 4432 in a suit. Could be 4333. Could be 4441. And then the five card suits, a 5332, a 5422, a 5431, a 5440, not very likely on that one. Then the six card suits and seven and so on. So when you start getting familiar with these patterns, that chunking, being able to have a pattern awareness, then you're going to start be able to prove your game because you don't have to be thinking about it as much. It'll just happen instinctively. Same for the points around the table. The opponents go one no trump, three no trump, 25 points. You've got 10, that's 35. My partner's got five. And we're going to start taking a look at some of those things today. Okay, so we're going to do the analysis where the inferences are going to come in. And we're also going to take a look at the algorithm. So the C, the I, and the A. Clever, yes? <laughs> so for the CIA, we're going to take a look at the algorithms. That is, when we're leading a sequence suit. Are we leading fourth best? Are we leading top of nothing, bottom of something? Okay, let's go ahead and head for the virtual table and play four hands. The opponents will be in three no trump. They'll be trying to promote their tricks before we promote our tricks. So it's um, a horse race. Now the opening leads are very critical. These hands are going to look just the same. These, by the way, are from Polling You, lesson number 67. And we're going to play hands one through four quickly 
just to give you the feel of the difference with where one card changed, how that would affect the play, and to see how the opening leads come into this. Okay, over to the south end. It is 15 to 17 points. They're going to open one no trump. We with a 5 4 2 2 in nice hearts. Ace, king, jack five times, jack nine four times in the diamond suit, doubletons in the blacks. And over in the north, the responder to the one no trump opener has nine points, so they'll invite game. But because they have a major, they will bid two club statement to say, partner, can you support one of my majors? Over to the east, our partner has a 5 3 3 2, um, jack 10 9 8, five times running, and in clubs, ace three times. Um, not much else. Over to the south, um, you do not have spades, but even if you did, you would bid the hearts for first, lower of the majors, so you respond to hearts. We're amused by that with five of them. It goes up to north, and they say, well, huh, I was hoping they'd do spades, so if I had three no trump values, I would just bid it now, meaning ten points or more, but no, you don't. You have nine points, so you will say two no trump, which implies to everybody four spades and eight or nine points. Back to south. Well, after hearing two no trump, um, if you had spades, you could now bid four spades because your partner implicitly has four of them and you have game values. But um, because they did two no trump invite with four spades, then we will just say three no trump. Yeah, let's play three no trump, partner. We have the maximum of 17 points and you've got eight or nine. Either one's fine. It gives us 25 for our game. Okay, our opening lead. We've heard everything, of course, by the opponents. One of them's got 16 or 17 points. The other's got eight or nine points, and um, we've got how many here? Four, five, six, seven, eight, and one is nine. So if there are 25-ish and we've got nine, 34, how many does that leave for a partner from 40? Yes, about six. Hopefully there's some primary honors. Now we've got two of the jacks, so they can't have those red jacks anyway. So we're gonna lead our fourth best. Notice if we lead the ace, the king, or the jack, we are going to lose. Uh, so we want to lead the fourth best. Also signals to our partner that we have values in that suit. We're leading low from something. Okay, uh, they go with the dummy up to the 10. Our partner plays the 9, and ostensibly that is from a doubleton playing high-low. Wouldn't be a singleton. I don't think there would be that many in the south hand. Possible, I suppose, but only a doubleton in the dummy that we can all see. So they don't like it. They say, geez, I've got a 4-2 in spades and mirrored values in the diamond suit, 3-3. Three, three. They're trying to pick on the heart suit, so we're going to try promoting the club suit. They play a club, and our partner, we knew, had four or five points, and they go up with the ace. Yes, and hopefully they're not going to try to promote the spade suit because they have no entries anyway. And if our, we led the three or the four, something like that, a low, then that means it's the bottom of something, an ace, a king, or a queen. Okay, so our partner comes back with a three of hearts, and we are so happy because we're winning with the jack, and we can see that after having won two tricks, we've got um, another three coming, so we are gonna set them by one. Now recall in this hand, look at our hand, we have ace, king, jack, five times in hearts, and a jack of diamonds for our high card points. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the next hand, which is number two. And on number two is that same basic hands, except, oh, our partner doesn't have the ace, we've got it. So that means as we've got four, five, six, eight, nine, and another four, 13. And if they just barely got to three no trump, our partner has one or two points. Not good, because it's not possible for them to win a trick and come back with the hearts. And with Ace, King, Jack five times, how are we going to finesse that doggone Queen of Hearts? Lucky them. Not so much for us. So we can play our fourth best. They win the 10. They play the club. And yes, we come in with the Ace, but oh, we wish our partner had it to finesse the Jack. And now we can't. Yeah, we can try playing our Ace of Hearts. And our partner goes high-low, showing yes, they really had a doubleton. We play the King, and um, that's nice. But the Queen's not going to fall unless they miss pull from their hand. So when we play the low heart, they go up with the queen and now they've got the rest of the tricks. They got three spades, three diamonds, and three clubs. That's one more than the number of tricks. So they are home free. 
Okay, so you see what we needed. We need to have entries from our partner's hand and able to set it with that holding. But we won't always have that exact holding. In this case, we do have that holding again. But looky here, our partner's got three hearts. Oh, that's pretty nice. And so um, they go with the heart to the seven or the ten. It really wouldn't matter. Our partner goes with the ten, or the nine, I should say, because they're trying to play third hand high to make sure that they drive something out. You don't want to play low and then have them take it with the seven, that's for sure. So um, we're not sure when our partner had to win it if they're from a doubleton or a tripleton exactly. All right, fair enough. Um, they play the ace of diamonds because they sense problem here. Now that the queen of hearts is out of the way, so that's one, two rounds of diamonds. And three rounds of diamonds. Oh, I guess we gave them a four or three this time. Good for them. So they come back with the ace of spades to their hand. Play that last diamond. And we put our jack on our, from our jack fourth. There's a spade up to the queen. The king of spades. And I guess they're in kind of a bit of a problem, aren't they? Eventually have to play either a heart, a spade, or a club. And whichever they do, that's their last trick. Because our partner has saved an entry to our hand and um, even though they played a spade we've got that one covered also. So the reason even though we have the ace of clubs this time uh, and we're able to win the contract is because our partner has three hearts. Count them. Three of them. So um, that was nice wasn't it? Okay so the fourth hand to close up this series we're going to have where you remember the second hand where we couldn't set them. Our partner had a double ton of hearts we had the five hearts, ace, king, jack, five times, and unfortunately we had the outside ace, so there was no getting to our partner's hand. Well, same thing here. The partner doesn't have the outside ace. We were able to set them when we had a tripleton, weren't we? This time we've got a doubleton, so it looks like we can't set them, but what? It says we can set them by playing anything the heart suit. Well, how's that? Well, notice this time we have the ten of hearts, so here again we can't give any solid rules. It'll always work all the time. We have to look at some of these little nuances. Does our partner perhaps have three in the suit? Do we have an outside entry or does our partner by using those inferences we spoke about? So if we lead the ace, the king, if the opponents were queen doubleton, fine. It's not likely to happen since south has four and 15 to 17 points. It could be a queen doubleton. I suppose in the north hand. But we've got this big outside entry here so even if our partner doesn't have three hearts we're um, in good shape with this extra top heart. In other words they don't have two heart winners here. So okay we lead an ace of hearts I suppose. Our partner goes high low doubleton. Fine. The king. And we saw the dummy. It wasn't queen doubleton so we play the jack. They get the queen. And they're going to have to do that club thing because they are three three in diamonds this time. And um, so, yeah, we're going to get our heart and one more heart. So we have our five tricks and are quite happy about that. That worked nice. Well, um, okay, I hope that worked for you. And then let's, as I think about it, let's take a look at one iteration. I'm going to modify this hand. And um, we're going to take the ace and give it to our partner and take something little coming back and put them in three no trump in the south again. And um, so when we see this shape again, we go, uh-oh, um, yeah, we don't have an outside ace there, so hopefully our partner does. This time we wouldn't want to lead the ace or the king, or that be loser plays, right? Because if we're starting to short our partner, let's say we just do it just one time. Our partner, I guess, goes high-low. Okay, um, we say, uh-oh, maybe we shouldn't have done that. Maybe we should um, go to our partner's club. Maybe our partner has a club. They play the nine, and our partner goes the ace. Yeah, okay, um, comes back with a heart, and they go with, um, oh, let's say a six. And what do we want to do? Go up with a ten would be enough. And we've got the King Jack. <laughs> if we play the King, you can see what happens. It's just not going to work, is it? So we've got to be a little bit careful in the way we play this. And so when we're doing the fourth best lead, don't just automatically think that that's all there is to the hand. 
count, count, count. The three types of people. Those who can count and those can't. But wait, the third type. So yeah, we must count. Even when we're counting, they're little jokes, don't we? So please, when you're playing these, don't just automatically start playing. Think about how do the auction go when they're, especially in a no trump contract, very well defined. One no trump, eventually two no trump, and then three no trump. Eight to nine points for one opponent. They don't accept. It's 15 to bad 16. If they accept, they've got 17 points or a good 16. Or maybe they just think we're bad defenders, right? We're not going to make good leads. But we are, and we're going to see more coming up in the next segment. Well, okay, Bridge friends, I hope you enjoyed the show so far. So we still have um, at least a couple more segments, maybe more. We've got quite a few hands to play, and we have more slides. We kind of broke them up this time to kind of intersperse them through. So a lot more in terms of the theory, chalk talk at the table, too. So as always, come on by bridgehands.com and um, go ahead and sign up for our free membership if you haven't already. If you have, then next thing, yes, go ahead and go for the premium ultra member, premium three months, Ultra one full year with everything, including our Hands of the Week series to look at. And remember, we have many lessons, about 80-some, that are in the Polling New series. We've extracted a couple of them here just so we can kind of get the feel for doing our opening leads as we're going to take a look at some of the different situations when we don't always do forced best leads, when we do sequence leads. We say, hey, we have no points, and maybe we should lead to our partner's hand in no trump. Or some trump leads, some things when we need to make aggressive leads and when not to. So thanks for coming by Bridge Hands. I hope you have a good day playing Bridge and I look forward to seeing you over on the flip side part two. Bye for now.